Hello everybody, I'm back with another video. Um, this time round, I would like to talk about some terminology differences between Scots law and English law. Really the main motivation for this, or the main idea for this video was the recent announcement by the Chartered Institute of Linguists uh, regarding the DPSI. So for those of you that haven't heard, they've decided to unify the law options. So the Scots law pathway, the English law pathway and the Northern Irish law pathway have been discontinued and instead they're going to offer a new unified law option. Um, <laughs> the jury is out as to whether this is a good or a bad thing and I think we just have to wait uh, until June and see um, how they actually manage to do that because uh, there are some very significant differences between the legal systems of these countries and um, and namely in legal areas where interpreters are quite commonly used. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they tackle those challenges. So what I'd like to do today is just talk a little bit about um, just a few terms, you know, that, that you know are quite, you know, so ubiquitous terms, really common terms that that are different in Scots law and English law. Obviously, there's huge, huge, vast differences between both systems, um, and and you know, this is just a but a tiny flavor of uh, of some of those differences. Um, so. Uh, without further ado, um, the first term I would like to talk about, believe it or not, is the term bail. Now, bail in English law and bail in Scottish law are actually the same words. They actually, you know, this, you know, terminologically, there's there isn't actually any difference. But actually, at, at a conceptual level, they are slightly different things. So the way we interpret the term bail in the context of Scott law or in the context, context of English law, I would argue, is different. Why? Well, in Scots law, bail is a set of conditions. They sign to be released pending trial, yeah? And that's it. It's just a set of conditions. In English law, it can include the payment of uh, money uh, in some circumstances. That never happens in Scottish law, never. It's not... Um, it's, it's not it's not part of what bail is so and in a lot of jurisdictions internationally where there is a bail system quite often or not always but quite often bail can involve uh, payment of money so terminologically when you go and look up the word bail in a dictionary you might get um, a word that's a closer equivalent to what bail is in english law whereas if you just use that term in scots law you would conf create confusion because it's not the same thing so even though technically that term, that word exists conceptually, it's different. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, so, so this is, this is the, really the first term. It's quite an interesting case, but it's a very ubiquitous word. As I said, it's something that comes up every day, but you know, how you would interpret it is, is, is really different um, uh, potentially. So that's the first word next defendant versus accused so in english law um, when someone's tried for a criminal case they go to court they become a defendant in scotland there's no such thing as a defendant it's called an accused <laughs> nice and simple so that's the other thing there's there is a, a defender in scots law but that that's that's got nothing to do with criminal cases that's actually um the person against whom a civil action um is lodged so different context, different meaning completely. Um, so yeah, that, that's another term that's quite, that's quite different, but this one, you know, a little bit easier to deal with, I suppose, if you, if you know the, the terminology. Libel. <clears throat> libel is another really interesting word. Libel in English law means written defamation. So when you write something about someone else uh, in a newspaper, knowing that it's false, whatever, just because you don't like them to have an attack on their person you know or whatever um in scotland that's got, so that's that's a crime it's called libel and in scotland that's called written defamation <laughs> nice and objective however the term libel does exist in scots law and it's used all the time so if you're a court interpreter you will encounter this term like every day um and because libel in scots law is a statement of criminal charges so in other words, it's a term quite often used to refer to the indictment or the complaint. Yeah. Um, so completely different meaning. Same word, completely different meaning. You know, yeah. Anyway, moving on. 
the next one, the next one's another interesting one. I think there's actually been a, a previous, you know, a few years ago, a Scott's Law paper, DPSI, that somehow the term arson crept up in there for some reason. There's no such thing as arson in Scotland. In Scotland, the crime of arson is called willful fire raising. So when you set fire to, to a building or a car intentionally, you know, someone else's property with malicious intent, um, you know, that's that's obviously a crime. And yeah, and, and you know, we all we all watch TV shows or whatever. And quite often, you know, they're, they're made down south in England and they use the word arson all the time or even in America. In Scotland, there's no arson. Just not not such, not 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 a thing. It's called willful fire raising. Yeah. Moving on, this is another important one: manslaughter. And once again, lots of people might be familiar with the term manslaughter, and like some of the other ones, um, some of the terms which might be a little bit more obscure. But we might be familiar with the term manslaughter. But in, once again, in Scotland, it doesn't exist. You know, it's, there's no such thing as manslaughter. It's called culpable homicide, and actually. Um, so manslaughter and culpable homicide, for those of you that don't know, is basically when someone calls someone else, uh, kills someone else uh, unintentionally, but with a degree of blame. So, for example, if you're driving under the influence of alcohol and you've got an accident and the passenger dies, you could be charged with culpable homicide or manslaughter in England because... Yeah, you, you did not intend to kill that person, but, you know, the fact that you were driving under the influence of alcohol means that you showed willful disregard for their security, for their safety. So you could be charged with, you know, culpable homicide. Or same thing, if you drive without a license and you, you know, run over a, a, a pedestrian on the pavement or whatever and you kill them, same thing, you could be charged with culpable homicide. Um they, they and they're not they're, they're not direct equivalents either. So you know legally, what constitutes manslaughter and, and what constitutes culpable homicide? That you know, and, and and basically the the bar for you know the, for the distinction between culpable homicide and murder is different between manslaughter and murder. For example, we don't really need to know that as as public service interpreters, I suppose. Um, but you know they're not exactly direct equivalents either. You know, even though they're both English words. Um, next one, burglary. <laughs> this is another interesting word. So we use the word burglary being used very commonly in TV dramas and cop shows and whatever. But in Scotland, there's no such thing as a gar as a burglar. Okay, so um, legally, the, um, the the crime of burglary is. Normally, the, the main equivalent is theft by housebreaking. But burglary in English law can also include, um, you know, entering someone else's car, for example, and stealing, you know, something from there or or other kind of premises. And in Scots law, that would not be theft by housebreaking. That would be a theft theft by opening lockfast places, for example. So it depends. So Scots law is, is more specific as to you know, depending on, on, the, on the circumstances of the case, what crime the person has actually committed. Um, but once again, the, the, the main point here being there isn't, you know, there isn't, the term burglary is not used in Scots law and there isn't even a direct equivalent. It depends on, on actually the circumstances of the case. The next term, I think is the final term I wanted to show you, is, is it's more or less the same thing. So wounding or grievous bodily harm. Um, in Scots law, this is assault, yeah. Uh, but then the what type of assault it is depends on or what type of crime has been committed depends on on the actual circumstances of the case so it could be uh, just assault to injury or assault to severe injury if you know if the person was was seriously wounded as a result of the crime um assault, assault to severe injury and permanent disfigurement for example let's imagine in a situation where a fight breaks out in a bar and someone, you know, grabs a bottle, breaks it and cuts the other person on the face with a bottle and they're left with a scar, maybe. That would count as assault to severe injury and permanent disfigurement, most likely. Uh, assault to the danger of life, to the danger of life, for example. So if it's a, an assault where, the, where you actually endangered someone's life due to, the, to, due to the, the circumstances of the case. So once again, there isn't actually that equivalent. Um, and and that would depend on the circumstances of the case. So, 
so once again, my main motivation for, or the main idea behind kind of um, recording this video was was this unified law option. So um, I, I'm really curious how, as how to they're going to deal with not only just the difference of terminology, but you know this difference, this differences on of concepts, really. Um, because you know, it's quite often it's not just a simple thing of, oh, burglary is theft by housebreaking, and we'll accept candidates that use both in the exam. It doesn't work that way. It can work that way to an extent sometimes, but it doesn't necessarily work that way. And then, would candidates in Scotland be expected to know English law terminology if uh, that creeps up in the exam? Would that be fair? Would that be appropriate or vice versa? If there's um, a Scots law term or an Northern Irish law term, even in the exam, would English law candidates be expected to know that? Should English law candidates be expected to know what culpable homicide is? Or should candidates in Scotland be expected to know what manslaughter is when that's not really the legal system that they're working under and that they're studying for? So these are all the questions in my mind that I've got at the moment regarding this unified law option you know, like I said at the start, the jury's out. We just have to wait and see. Hopefully, uh, the Charter Institute will deal with it uh, well. But um, they certainly do have a challenge ahead of them. Um, and we just need to give it time and wait and see. But I hope this, you found this video useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Um, if you've got any comments you'd like to make, if I made any mistake in the video, please do to post and and say so. Um, if you if you know if any similar um, terms that are different in Scots law and in English law, and uh, you'd like to, to to share with us, then feel free to to leave a comment as well. And otherwise, until next time, have a good time, have a good day. Okay, take care of yourself.